Selwyn here from winstrength.com, bringing you the second day of the fifth week of the Dark Horse Training Program by Brian Olsru. Like usual, I'll leave links below for Brian Olsru's training video where he explains and outlines a program so that you can get a bit more in-depth explanation as to how the program works and what you need to do if you want to do this program yourself. I'll also leave links for the Lift Fault website where they've actually taken a lot of the hard work and difficulty out of tabulating the video into a spreadsheet format so that if you do want to do this program, uh, they've created a spreadsheet free spreadsheet on Google that you can actually use and plug in your own numbers and exercises so you can do this program yourself without having to worry about plugging everything into a spreadsheet. So second day of the fifth week, like usual, brings us upper body pushing and pulling. Um, we started off today with some conditioning work, really simple, just five rounds of jumps, push-ups, pull-ups, nothing crazy, nothing simple, just enough to get the blood flowing. Uh, followed up with some warm-ups for the day where I did uh, just the empty bar weight and then we just ramp up so we work up with our main workout for the day. Uh, what I did want to do today was something different. I want to cut to uh, the actual sets of my workout and I was just going to voice over uh, the video so that you can see exactly how the program unfolds um, rather than chopping and changing between different exercises. I wanted to show you uh, a, a sweet, a single continuous shot of the program so you get an idea of how this actually incorporates the uh, conditioning and explaining and it kind of gives you a visualization of how uh, the supersets or these giant sets really pan out and how difficult they can be. Obviously I won't show my rest periods because I'm not doing much fiddling with the camera <laughs> but I, I did want to cut over to some voiceover so you can see exactly a continuous set so you're not wondering how this program pans out. We're not doing one workout then the next it's just flowing on from each workout to the next. And ripping here with the first set of the max effort work, I figured I would throw in the first and last set so you can see the difference in uh, conditioning that I have. Uh, we're opening with uh, Balma Rose, 185 pounds for 12 reps. Uh, again, I could have had a more horizontal back angle to accompany this movement just to get a bit of a different uh, lat activation angle. But again, as you can see, once that drops, we move straight into the bench pressing. Uh, here is pin bench pressing, 225 for three reps. I try and minimize the rest period in between each of the exercises there, but that kind of drags out, so do the best we can. Uh, and you can see here that I do want to, with the bend burn pressure, you do want to rest the, the, the barbell on the safety pins. Um, another alternative would be if you have one of those bench blocks or a board, you can do that too. But I generally like to set the pins right at where it would normally be, maybe the inch the inch above my chest at the good arch. And we move straight over, we walk over to some uh, V-ups. Again, the idea here is it's continual movement. We're going from one movement to the next. And that helps with the conditioning and adds in that extra factor of conditioning so that... Um, we can minimize the rest and we're just getting in some extra sets. And as Brian Elzer says in his video, if your conditioning is gassed by 10 sets of sit-ups and there's something wrong with your conditioning um, or something along those lines. So I'm definitely wanting to change that. And we wrap this up with the conditioning work for today, which is just sandbag over shoulders, get some explosive movements into that. Uh, nothing really special here. Again, nothing fancy with the movements. Uh, for the abs and conditioning, you're really just wanting to make sure you're stimulating the abs and then you're also getting a good conditioning workout. Um, and that's that. That's how a superset works. And now we move on to the last superset for the day. Sorry, the last max effort work for the day. Um, again, 125 pounds for 12. You can see the fatigue kind of setting in. A lot more body English in the, in the rowing here. And the, the toes are lifting up in each set i'm trying to get in some uh some hip movement into it and again adding in some rest periods when i can so i'm probably cheating a little bit here because i am having to throw on the wrist wraps just to get a bit more wrist support um i guess if my condition was better i would just leave the wrist wraps on but again a little little cheat here to throw in a little bit of rest in between uh, the workouts before the pin bench press uh, this last set of pin bench press was 265 pounds for sets of three i think this is a great way to call it at um see here there's a bit of a delay in the uh execution of this bench press but nevertheless we're going 
into it and you can see that the there is some rest period in between each movement as you as you get to each station i guess as a word it, this is really a i mean if you go back to the olden days it's like on days sorry if you go back a couple of years this is uh, circuit training at its finest i think but again see we have, we still have that good arch in the bench press lower it touch the chest you want to rest you want to kind of deload a little bit that weight so you remove that stretch reflex as much as possible um, as the weight gets heavy i do tend to touch touch and go rather than have that little bit of a pause but you really want to stop that momentum from coming back up and that's the idea and the point of the pinch bench press and at least that is the last set it is getting a little bit more taxing here obviously um, and I think that's one of the, the great things about this program is how much it taxes your conditioning without necessarily having to forego pushing out the weights. So ideally we can bring up the weights as well as bring up some conditioning. And that's the, that's my hope for this program at the end of it. And then just some poorly executed V-ups going over here. Uh, I've always said my abs are my weakest link and I think it, it's highlighted here. We just have poorly this V-up is executed and then we're wrapping up with some sandbag throws um the sandbag throws i really enjoy i think they're a great a great tool if you can get a sandbag get one uh this is a get rx sandbag i'll probably put a review up in another in another couple of months here we're coming up on that year mark and it was a free sandbag that i won in a competition so i haven't been nice with it and i think it's been holding up just fine like i'm throwing it around they don't recommend doing a lot of things that i've been doing with it just to test it out um, I do like the over-the-shoulder. I think it, it's working that dynamic hip movement, that hip hinge, which I think is great. After we get through with all that max effort work, we do move on to our volume work for the day. Uh, following through, I did drop the weight down for those barbell rows. Uh, with the barbell rows, like I said, I'm trying to focus a little bit more on the technique. Uh, we are doing a floating barbell row, so ideally... My back isn't as high of an angle there, but again, at least we're getting some muscle hypertrophy stimulus there with the, the back angle. Um, if, if I was into bodybuilding and really trying to isolate the muscle, uh, the back angle would be a lot more important to me, I think. Uh, <laughs> you could prove me wrong in the comments below, but uh, with bodybuilding, where muscle definition is and hypertrophy is a lot more paramount than just being able to lift a lot of heavy weight, the back angle is going to pay a huge you're gonna to have to pay a lot more attention to the back angles during the barbell row than if you are just for general strength and conditioning so we did drop that down from 185 down to 155 pounds we kept the rep scheme the same i did want to again keep the reps higher for this section of the workout just to get more blood flowing uh, and not really trying to stick away from the lower reps because we are doing some lower rep work earlier in the earlier in the first phase uh, we follow that up with the decreased weight again with the pin bench press 210 pounds target reps were eight for the first amrap set i was able to get out 10 so i'm really happy with the two over goal that i like to set for myself um, but like last like yesterday sorry like day one i did have to drop out that last set of the volume so we go from three to two sets uh, just so we can hit that time frame and and keep this work up in, in check for not blowing out the time frame. Uh, wrap this up with a dynamic effort overhead pressing, like usual, 10 minutes of every minute on minute work. I did increase the weights this week from last week was 95, now we're doing 105 pounds. Uh, I did notice that my form was starting to break down a little bit there, so I had to be, I have to be a lot more cognizant, cognizant of how my form is, especially during the last part. A lot of fatigue has set in by now and uh, I notice a lot of tricep fatigue when I'm trying to push the weight up, especially after doing those uh, heavy pin bench presses. Uh, nevertheless, we did make it through all 10 of the sets prescribed, and we did stay within the 10 minute time limit. Um, you'll notice that the speed kind of isn't there. The, if you've been following my journey so far, you know the overhead press has been one of my glaring weak points. Um, just technique wise weight wise foundation like everything about it i've been really trying to focus on it and when i when we do hit this point of like fatigue and stress factor hitting in um it isn't the best way for me to 
progress just by throwing heavy weights at it. So I have tra been trying to temper the weights down. Uh, this is slightly above my 50% of my one rep max being 205 pounds. So, so I have been wanting to keep the weights in check for the dynamic effort movement like all the other movements we're doing in the dynamic effort section. So we're roughly around 50% of my one rep max. So hopefully we're able to bring up the speed and technique for this movement. Uh, we'll see what happens next week. I might try a warm up set beforehand and see how the weight feels. That way I can really dial in that technique. Uh, we might have to temper that back and go back down to 95 until we're able to really solidify this technique and the speed and for the overhead press. It has been one of my uh, weak points and I think pushing out poor technique isn't helping me progress. Uh, it's it's hard to, <laughs> everyone kind of goes through this, it's hard to dial the weights down when you just want to keep pushing out heavy weights. Uh, so hopefully I can keep that in check next week. Like usual, I'll leave uh, a playlist here so you can catch up on previous episodes of the Dark Horse Training Program as well as stay up to date with how my progress will proceed in the future as well as my final review and rating for the program. This has been someone from Winch Strength and remember, a better life through strength.